Hello guys, I'm Croft. In this video, we're going to talk about the Xenomorph XX121, better known just as Xenomorph, which literally translates to strange form from Greek. While Xenomorphs are considered to be a perfect organism, they don't seem to have a pair of eyes, which would be a disadvantage for a hostile animal that is known for its excellent hunting skills. That brings up a question, how can Xenomorphs see and do they have eyes at all? I'm gonna go over the biology of alien sensory organs, which will give us some insights on how xenomorphs actually perceive the world around them, and I'll also explain why their heads are so big compared to the rest of the body. There has been one detail on an alien's head that may be an eye, but it's so small and the same black as the skin, so it's hard to say if these are eyes or just implants. Geiger, creator of the Xenomorph design, perceived the alien as being vaguely human, but a human in full armor, protected from all outside forces. He stated that the creatures don't have visible eyes, because he felt that it made them much more terrifying if you couldn't tell if they were looking at you. In the Alien vs Predator series, the game implies that the Xenomorph sees using its attack tongue, which serves as a sensory organ. That's why there are a number of instances when xenomorphs use their inner jaw for different purposes other than attacking. To study their environment, they can extend their inner jaw, which may be an equivalent of ears, nostrils, or even eyes. That would explain second jaw movements when Ripley discovers a xenomorph on the ship and when Gadiman observes an alien behind the glass. It's also widely assumed that xenomorphs identify enemies by sensing pheromones. This have never been explicitly confirmed nor denied, but a drone will not kill a host body already infected. This way, by sensing pheromones, the xenomorph in Alien 3 is able to identify that Ripley has an alien embryo inside of her. Another idea is that the entire head is one big insect-like eye. In Alien 3, a fish eye lens represented the runner's side, but it's unknown if it's really how the xenomorph sees or simply an artistic decoration. Another theory proposes that the eyes are similar to a desert lizard eye, meaning that they lay under a thin layer of skin yet are deep enough that they're not visible from the outside. This is seemingly supported by early models and toys of the warrior xenomorph while Alien was still the only existing movie in the timeline. These show an actual physical humanoid skull with eye sockets built under a smooth carapace. Due to the absence of clearly visible eyes, it's possible that the creatures use echolocation to see its environment pretty much like bats. It may be for this reason that xenomorphs make these weird sounds almost constantly. Echolocation would also allow xenomorphs to see through obstacles. Another interesting theory is that xenomorphs may be able to detect their prey through electroreception. This is the method sharks use to detect even the most hidden prey. Creatures with the electroreception sense can detect the electromagnetic field all animals produce, allowing them to detect the creature's heartbeat. This would explain how xenomorphs always know where the humans are. And as depicted in the Alien vs Predator games, the xenomorphs can also detect their prey using pheromones. Early xenomorph designs may indicate that its eyes are behind their black carapace and they see through it similar to a one-sided mirror. Except in this case, no one can see in, but the xenomorph can see out. Some species of terrestrial fish see through a transparent layer of skin, so it's possible that xenomorph vision is similar. A xenomorph head may be so big due to a variety of different sensory organs listed above. However, there is another explanation why xenomorphs need such a big head. It's assumed that alien inner jaws are powered by extremely strong muscles inside the creature's head that enable it to be quickly launched and retracted. To obtain such a level of force and speed, there has to be a really strong muscle that would probably occupy a good amount of space. Another theory is that the inner jaws are pneumatic and the long head assists in pressuring them. That's how it gets the force required to punch through skulls and even metal helmets. 
Thank you guys for watching, I really appreciate that. Let me know in the comments if you have another theory about this and like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel for more content.